So, uh, I have one. It's a pleasure to close in some way with the last uh, invitation. Uh, so, thanks a lot for the invitation. Uh, my name is Antonio Picciarone. I'm a researcher at Fondazione Pro Kessler in Italy, North of Italy, very close to Austria. Uh, so, uh, this is a, a research center, but we are inside a smart community lab that is. Uh, um, a lab in FPK that is devoted to push the research results versus the, 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 the province of travel and in general to the community. Okay? So we want to make the community more sustainable. This is our, our, our goal. So this is a joint work with Anna Paola Marconi from FPK and that was educated from the University of Prague and Sweden in Stockholm. Okay? So here I present um, a very, let me say, fun topic. So, the, this is the gamification, okay? So, who knows what is the gamification? So, great. Do you know some real gamified application? Or you already have used some applications with points, okay? Like in supermarkets? No, no, no. no, no, no. I'm using it for my diabetes. Okay, great. So, gamification is when we use game elements, okay, in, in a serious context. Okay. So and uh, in our in our uh, uh, lab, the main goal was to engage <laughs> and make uh, behavioral change for citizens. Okay. So we want to monitor in some way not the citizens. Okay. It's not our task. Must is to change their behavior in a such a way that we are more sustainable in different contexts. Okay. For example, in education. So we have developed applications in this in this field. In governance, in forest hiking, it's a very hot topic now. Okay, for the health, so everyone uses their mobile app during the, the running uh, action during the day. For social good, for energy efficiency, and for sustainable mobility. In principle, in the last uh, I think four or five years, we develop a lot of mobile apps inside our lab, especially for education and for, uh, for sustainable mobility. Okay. So, and uh, what we did uh, in some way, we realized this mobile application introducing inside the concept of points, the concept of actions, that's uh, uh, if the user executes game points, challenges, leaderboard, uh, uh, and a lot of prizes uh, for weeks, for months, and for the year, okay? So, how a game of world system is done? So, it's composed. Of course, we have three different layers, starting from the core elements that uh, represent in some way the basic uh, artifacts of the language. So we can express actions, we can express points, we can express challenges, page collection, and little book, for example. Okay? If we go up to one layer, we have the mechanics. So what are the components in that in some way using the basic elements will uh, execute Will, will make possible the execution of steps of the players uh, during the game. Okay? The dynamics is that is the last layer when we have the, the merchant behaviors of, of, the, of the citizen in general. For example, we can uh, monitor the cooperation between players. Okay? We have dynamics like engagement. So I'm playing with a, a gamified application, I can invite my friends to do the same game and we'll see points together. They are traditional points. We have competition, of course. Okay? So we need to compete in some way to engage more people and to make the game more fun. Okay? And to make uh, especially the changes uh, possible. Okay? So game elements are, as I said, they are the basic building blocks of the gamified applications. They are defined to specify how the players should interact with the application to reach the ultimate goal. Okay. The mechanics are defined by a set of rules to specify the how, okay, so how the game should evolve. And so we have at the end the dynamics that describe the emergent behavior that arises using, the, using the, the, the game system when the mechanics are used. Okay. So we have developed a gamification engine okay, in, our, in our lab. This gamification engine is composed by a set of components, okay, but in principle, this is the core um, components that I studied 
uh, in order to make <coughs> years in the overall development uh, life cycle. Okay? The gamification engine receives events from the, the, the environment, from mobile apps, from services, from sensors. These events are wrapped uh, as actions. And in the gamification engine, we have the evolution of the games, where we memorize the data, memorize the evolution of the players, uh, uh, we analyze the profile of the players, so how they are behaving during the game, uh, and so on. This is, and it is based principally in, in, a, in a very well-known language that is the rules, okay, to specify the rules of the game. So, we have developed the different games uh, for citizens. One is uh, the mobile app that is called Play and Go. So, a user, a citizen can use this app uh, to make sustainable mobility. Okay, so they use the app, they memorize directions, and they accumulate points during the day. For example, if I take the bike today, I accumulate more points in respect if I use my private car. Okay, if I take the bus, I have a certain amount of points. Okay, if I do a combination of more sustainable trips, I have to move more points, and so on and so forth. Okay? And during the life of the game, so we have, we have for example, four editions from 2016 to 2018. Uh, six months each uh, uh, with a certain amount of players, with a lot of sustainable team lockers. Okay? We memorize all this information during this edition. The other application is for uh, uh, little, little students okay, at the school. So we have an application to make uh, the education uh, uh, say, uh, fun at the same time with the mobility together in a, in a safe and a social way. So in the sense that we have a, a kind of mobility um, mean that is called Pedibus. Do you know Pedibus? Mm. Pedibus means uh, when the child, children will go at school by working together. There is uh, some volunteer that pick up the children during the bus. They form a kind of world of children, okay, and they reach the school in a safe way without to use uh, uh, cards of the parents. Uh, they go all together. Of course, there is an organization behind because you, you need to have volunteers every day. <coughs> uh, in some way, monitor them using sensors. Okay, they have a <coughs> sensor attached to the bed to understand if the child is in, in a safe position, if uh, they have reached the goal. Okay. And if they arrive at the school in the same way. Okay. When they arrive at the school, they have a kind of dashboard. They can sign, they can uh, look into this dashboard and say, I arrive, I'm arriving at the school now. Okay. I can sign my name. I did uh, uh, these kilometers by working okay, with uh, these friends. All these things are memorized, are memorized in a virtual trip. So they, they do a virtual trip from a social location to a destination, <laughs> yes, <laughs> every day. But the kind of knowledge that for each, for each leg, the, the teachers can assign multimedia materials uh, for the lectures. So they attach, for example, geography information for ge to study geography, uh, to study history, for example, if they do a specific path from one city to another. Okay, for example, if I start the Victor Day from Rome, I can study Rome in this day, okay, uh, and so on and so forth. Okay. They accumulate points and they can play against uh, another classroom or uh, one institute against another institute, okay, and this is done uh, in Albania. And now we have a lot of children playing, playing okay, with a lot of teachers involved, uh, with uh, instances of games involving a lot of schools, okay. Now we are uh, boundaries to the, to the Trentino region, but our plan is to go out uh, to the rest of Italy and sell the idea to the other uh, schools. Okay? So, of course, we want to motivate the target players with gamification. We want to combine uh, the divided or behavioral changes goal during the execution. But the most important aspect is that we want to have an easy way to reproduce the games in different contexts. So, if another city collapses, and want to implement the same game, we need to redo now the work from scratch. Okay? So we need an environment to make this reproduction of the games in an easier way. So the current game is a lot in the sense that first of all I need to convince my developer to use MPS. <laughs> okay? Because I'm pretty sure that 
this tool will help a lot to reduce a lot of problems. Okay? For example, errors of the implementation. They are implementing everything in Java, JavaScript, you know, JS, and so on and so forth, but without uh, a specific uh, um, uh, semantics of the gamification. Okay? So they know gamification, they implemented the, a very nice gamification engine, but the problem is that to change something during uh, the execution of the game is not easy at all. Okay? So it's difficult to monitor in the evolution of the game. So what is the status of a specific game? So what are the steps that they need to do to reach the goal? Okay? We cannot monitor until now. Okay? So this is done using Excel files, of course. This is a, <laughs> a lady that every day is monitoring the, the steps done by children and say, okay, we have assigned this challenge. It's too hard for them. We need to revise it. Okay? Less kilometers by walking. Okay? Or more the kilometers by bikes for the next week. This is done by hands. We don't need more of this, of course. So we want to reuse the game elements in other scenarios because if we are in the same domain, we can reuse. Okay? Uh, definition of wrong update for a set of score. So, for example, we need to, to update the system in a linear way and we want to monitor the player uh, progress. If they are too slow, if they are too fast, and then revise the challenges. So we have developed GDF. GDF is a gamification design framework using MPS. Okay. This is done in a modular way. So when I started to start the gamification engine, uh, I started to define the gamification framework in different aspects. Okay. So of course we have the gamification model that is devoted for the main project, point actions, challenges, uh, in the boards and so on. <laughs> we have the game model for the, the mechanics uh, for the specific domain. Okay? For the education, we have some mechanics for uh, mobility, we have other mechanics. We have the instance level, where we have the player instances, okay? data from the, the, the specific instance. It's not enough to have this. For this, we have added the utilities. Okay? So game utilities are languages for simulation. We want to simulate if we execute a certain activity, what's happened to the general status of the game? We want to adapt the game <coughs> over time. So we want to inject a new challenge immediately, okay? To push more the game faster or, 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 or to reduce the speed of the game. Okay? And other languages that uh, I will show you uh, later. So, of course, we started using MTS. We define the language GML for, for, the, basic, uh, for the basic elements. So we had uh, uh, GML as an extension of, uh, as an instance of MPS. So we have defined the actions, badges, badge collection, with the, a, an overall definition of the game, okay? That can, uh, can provide a specific ID, a specific domain, a specific owner, and a lot of children for the specific core elements of the game, okay? So we have defined the, the game model language, it relies on what are the mechanics of the game, and uh, is devoted to the design of a concrete game in a specific domain, like education or mobility. Okay, and for this we have defined a specific pattern or rule for the for the specific domain, or a specific actions in the game. For example, we have we, we separated the actions into uh, sets: one for the data driven, so the action that acts on data. So when we change kilometers, for example, when we execute the legs of the wheelchair trip in the education domain, we have a standard experience points. So the points that are used to quantify uh, the progression of the player, for example, how much distance is done using a pedibus, uh, how much kilometers we have done today, and so on and so forth. And we have also other kinds of uh, elements like the skill points that are Relate to the skill of the specific player, okay? uh, or uh, experience points related to the experience of the player, the batch collection, so a, a set of batch <coughs> that we can assign to the specific, the specific players, and the challenge models. So when we need to assign a new challenge, we have a specific model that express the challenge. So at the instance level, another layer down, okay. Here is where we see the dynamics, so how the real instance of the game uh, appears. So what are the elements that we need to monitor in some way? 
and hence is used to specify or to instantiate the different games from the same game definition. So, for example, if we need to instantiate the game in one school or in another school in two different places uh, of the same city, we, we start from the game definition and reach the way to different instances. Okay? And of course, they can include the different uh, set of teams, players, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Okay? So, as I said, we have a set of game utility selectives. So, we have modeled the game, we have instantiated the right instances. Okay? Now, we need to simulate. And for this, we had a language that was used to simulate the specific execution of the game. This is composed by a list of executions, okay, and the reference to the specific game instance. Of course, the, the single game execution is done by uh, a set of references, like what is the classroom that is playing, what are the players that are part of this classroom, what, what are the type of data action and event action that they want to simulate in the specific, uh, in the specific uh, instance. Another language is for monitoring. So I want to monitor the state of a specific team or player and check specific variables. Okay? For example, what is the daily speed of the specific player? What is the, the percentage of the competition of the challenge for this specific, for this specific player? And so what is the delay if there is a delay in the game? In order to revise the model of, of the specific of the specific. At the end of the adaptation, so when we have simulated the, the specific instance, when we have monitored the specific instance values, we want to adapt the game instance. So for this we have an adaptation language. So it allows to inject new game content. For example, on the fly, uh, we want to revise the challenge uh, proposed by a recommendation system. In our gamification framework, we have also components that use uh, learning approaches to understand uh, usually what is uh, the challenge that uh, is programmable to assign to this specific user profile. Okay? For example, if I prefer to use a bike and I don't want to use my uh, uh, private car, of course, it's better to assign more kilometers by bike than use the car. Okay? To avoid the generation of uh, not usable uh, challenges. So, with MPS, I have derived this framework. This is the internal logic of, the, uh, of my framework. So, in principle, at the level of MPS, I have the different languages uh, for the core language plus the utilities. They are connected in some way with these, these arrows. Okay, we have uh, dependencies in both uh, these, these languages. But for each uh, layer, I have some generation. So, for example, when I define a new model that came from the specific domain, I have a generator that generates some piece of code that immediately will, uh, will be deployed in the gamification engine. So, I have a new instance of the game in my dashboard. Okay, this is the effect. When I have an instance and I want to adapt, of course, I will generate some piece of code in terms of uh, changes in the database, in the MongoDB database that will change the status of the instance, okay? New parameters, new values for specific uh, elements. For the simulation, we generate uh, JUnit classes, okay? In order to uh, test in some way this simulation and, and to see what is the effect of, of the execution. For the adaptation, in the same way, we generate uh, uh, changes uh, in, the, in the instance uh, database. So this is available as an open source uh, project, so you can uh, download uh, and play with this. Uh, there is also a video where I can do some demo uh, on the uh, framework uh, uh, working. So let's see some, some uh, small examples. Okay? For example, for the deployment of a new game. So we have generated an editor where we can, we can in some way define the different aspect of the game, like uh, what is the name of the game, what is the domain, the starting date and the end date of the game, what is the institute that we play, what are the school and so on, what are the skill points, what are the experience points, what are the data driven actions that a uh, player can, can execute, what are the event driven actions, what are the page collections, and the single player challenge attached to the single player. 
when we have, we use this editor to define a new, a new game, okay? When we have this, we can, uh, in some way, uh, have a generator. This is a generator that I have implemented to map this description to the to, to some piece of code that will be, in some way, injected in the gamification engine. So the gamification engine is running on the server, okay? What we do, we simply have a, a, a post code to a, the API of our gamification engine, and we push this new code in the, in the gamification engine. The effect will be a new game in our dashboard immediately, okay? So the second step is the adaptation. So for example, we have the challenge concept attached with an editor, so we can describe a new challenge. When we have described a new model with a certain type of, of a challenge, for example, a daily trips challenge, so how much trips I need to do for a specific day, I can define that this daily trips challenge uh, specifying what are the variables. For example, uh, the bonus score value, um, what is the type uh, of, of the, the bonus, uh, for example, in respect to the distance of, of, of the trip, what is the built-up price attached to these trips? For example, 20, uh, 200 points, okay, if I execute two days, the same trip. Uh, what is the price won? So if I execute uh, a specific distance, I have the true value. And uh, what is the leg that I choose to assign the specific challenge of the built-up trip? So, of course, I have a generator for this. And what we can do, we can run this, uh, this piece of code and we can inject the new adaptation means a new challenge in our dashboard, okay? So we start from MPS and we'll inject everything in the gamification engine. So the monitoring is the last step. So we have the monitoring length where we can specify uh, a plugin. We have specified a plugin to retrieve all the instances already running in the gamification engine. So with this plugin, in some way, we retrieve the specific instance. For example, this is an example of, of the retrieved player state. For example, we have a certain school. We have a certain player for this school. We have the game ID that the player is playing. And we have a set of parameters for the state. For example, how much card distance this player has done. For example, 71 periods uh, weekly. How much paid boost trips the player has done, the bus distance, uh, for example, the park and ride uh, uh, actions executed by the player, and the status of the challenge. So, for example, this player has executed a challenge that is called uh, a school without card, okay, completed, with a set of information like what is the score of the bonus attached to the, to the, to the player, what is the, the virtual prize, okay, for example, the virtual prize is uh, a fly to Cambodia, okay? Because this is a virtual trip and this player jump from one leg to another one using this virtual bonus, okay? And uh, uh, the bonus type and, and the, he wants the prize. So together with the, the, the player state, we have the monitor elements. So we can monitor for the specific instance, for example, the speed of the day, okay? For the specific Player. They needed days to reach a challenge, for example, 14 days. This guy has played to win the challenge. Uh, the delay, so he arrived two days in delay, okay, to the specific uh, destination. And uh, the completion percentage of the overall trip was 40%. Uh, uh, okay. And this is the monitoring. Uh, so, of course, we have a demo available. You can download the, the video and you can see how you can play with, uh, with, uh, with this tool. Uh, in conclusion, we have uh, a domain independent solution for design gamified applications. So, we have applied in the education domain, but also in the mobility domain. And, and our plan is also to, to extend in other domains. For example, uh, um, last month there was at the Model Conference in, in Munich. And during my poster session, when I presented this work, a lot of companies came in my uh, desk and asking why I want to apply the gamification in my company. So I was asking for, for, for which purpose. So I have the developers that should work better. <laughs> okay. So how I can inject the gamification in their production? Okay. What are the actions that 
I can monitor, okay, in order to, in order to understand if they are working, respecting the task, okay, in which day they work better and which day they work less, okay, and try to incentivize them with uh, a kind of expense in the salary at the end of the month. Okay. So the same was from a mobility company. So they, they in some way, um, has a kind of mobility manager inside the company, and they want to uh, push more the car sharing facility inside the, the company. Okay? So usually they use the car with one driver, okay? but they arrive in the same place from the same uh, sort of location. So it's location. So why don't match the car and you go together at work? If they use the same car with more employee, they receive points at the end of the month. So they receive a bonus in the salary for the car sharing facility. So, but how they can use gamification? So, the point is that if you have the same model uh, in the same, uh, in some way, environment, it is possible. The point is that how to define the actions and the, the game element, the core game elements for the specific domain. This, this, this is the R, the R task. Okay? So, and uh, the Fusion for Fusion world, we want to investigate further the adaptation and the learning capabilities, so how to automatize more this uh, feedback loop in order to inject the, the challenges uh, in, a, in a faster way. We want to integrate more with the recommendation system, making the system loop automatically. So, of course, so we need to, to have editors and monitoring dashboard in a user-friendly way. So now we have text. So our plan is to generate, uh, for example, HTML pages also for monitoring. Okay in order to give to my colleague a user-friendly tool to understand what is the status and react uh, in an easier way. Uh, of course, a more solid empiric evaluation. Uh, so now we are at the stage of the concept. So I started the project, I think, uh, six months ago. Okay. Um, and so we want to introduce this uh, framework in the production pipeline. So, Again, I want to convince my developer that MDS can be in the production pipeline, of course. Um, and we want to be ready for the next game's editions, okay? To use MPS to define the, the, the game models and to run the instances directly from. So, uh, so, the last point. Uh, so, I will be an editor of this book, okay? So, uh, we uh, have an agreement with Springer, okay? Uh, we had this agreement during the conference in, uh, uh, in Munich, the Models Conference. Uh, so we have a call for book chapters. So I think this is a good place to, to spread this. So if you are interested in uh, writing chapters, uh, explaining your experience in using uh, MPS for domain specific languages, okay? Uh, this, this is the, the timeline. So we want to receive uh, um, a short proposal by 25 October, so like the title and the short abstract, to understand what will be the, the main topic okay, uh, that you want to, to, to propose. And uh, we have a, a, the right schedule until uh, next July when we start to edit the book uh, completely. Okay? Uh, so you are free to, to send me your proposal when you want. Okay. Of course, I try to respect this this deadline as possible uh, because we need to send to Springer the, the complete list of, of chapters that we have been. Uh, so I think here there is a lot of uh, uh, space in this room to write uh, experience uh, in using uh, JetBrains and yes, This is, I think, a good way to push more these, uh, let me say, great, uh, great uh, framework. So. That's all. Thanks a lot. Springer publishes academic books, so is this book also supposed to be with an academic style and prior work references? It's not true. <laughs> okay. No, I, I can um, answer immediately. <coughs> so last uh, year I published the, the book that will be uh, officially uh, uh, available in December on microservices. Okay. Microservices, science and engineering will be the title. 
And the, the book is composed by half chapters from academia and half chapters from industry. So they are changing a little bit. They appreciate a lot this kind of books where there is experience inside. And uh, especially because the goal um, is to understand what is the, the final uh, uh, reader. Okay? For this kind of book, they say that academia, of course, will be, but also some company that want to know if MPS is the right to, to introduce in their production. And this is a good point that we share experience and to push forward to use our own MPS inside of the, uh, uh, the academia for uh, uh, courses and for industry to start a new experience and new production. Other questions? Comments? Uh, we showed the map of the game uh, and And then this one box and uh, my question is that uh, what is the mechanism of uh, providing deep to other sound uh, bicycle uh, yeah. and bicycle bicycle? So I'm missing the, the, the sensor on the side. <laughs> no, no, the set of side. Um, of course, now the approach that they did was a kind of bottom up approach. Okay, we have a notification engine okay, that is working, we have mobile apps running. Okay, so to the final language, uh, my approach was uh, okay, try to retrieve the instances. Okay, I start from the, the, the newer layer. Now we have the model, the, the language for instances, and they construct step by step the abstraction until the, the more general. Okay. So until now I can define a game, I can instantiate, okay, but uh, uh, cannot be executable in the mobile app. Okay. Now I have a new game in the dashboard, okay. but the problem is that I need to deploy this in, in the mobile app that is running. The mobile app is in some way the sensor side. So because you use GPS, you use a sensor attached to the backs of the children, you use this kind of stuff during the trip. These data are retrieved by the actual gamification. My plan is, okay, let's first to convince them that uh, I can monitor, I have a language to monitor, I can simulate, I can adapt, and until the, the, the more app support, the definition of the overall application. Okay. So like to deploy a mobile app, theoretically, from the framework. But it's a very <laughs> long part. Okay. So uh, until now, I cannot instantiate the overall system. So I play with instances, and so I'm uh, it's only testing the languages to understand if they are correct, if we can do something more in terms of monitoring and adaptation of the already run. To define new games uh, is a very long uh, path. But, but I agree with you, a sensor could be another language, for example, and you can retrieve data from some gateway, okay, and you can model the state of the play in terms of steps. Yeah, validate. Okay. Other questions? You try to apply to MPS itself. Apply? In Facebook, MPS itself. Yeah, <laughs> good. <coughs> this could be very nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we are, we are, we are uh, writing now a kind of uh, visionary paper on this in the sense how to uh, insert gamification. In the, in, the, in, the, in the application done without the gamification in mind. So, for example, if you have MPS, how you can check the gamification inside? Okay. So, you need to understand what are the actions that you can do in MPS and that relate this action to the points that you want to cite. For example, if you create a new plugin, Okay, for MPS, using <laughs> points. Okay, so but you need to engage people in some way. <laughs> so what is the bonus? The yeah, but you, you can assign gamification in a way that you want. You can probably, when you are implementing, you are implementing in the wrong way with respect to, I don't know, the MPS standard, if there is a standard. 
someone tried to use MVI as I said it. Okay. Is the wrong way, is the correct way? You talk to your user and get to the term points. Of course, here the, the, the domain is different in the sense we want to make it more sustainable. And, uh, so, to change the behavior of people uh, is not easy. Yeah. In this way, uh, especially for mobility, we had uh, very nice results. In terms of reduction of usage of private cards, for example. Mm. And this was uh, just very good. Also for children, how to involve all the stakeholders that are not only the students, you have teachers, you have the parents, you have the students, you have the, uh, our politicians. So it's a very complex system. Uh, and you need to define uh, the, the constraints. Okay, thanks again.